Welcome back to Between Bells, everyone. Despite growing into an entertainment giant in the past few years and offering up blockbuster shows like Stranger Things, The Crown, Bridgerton, one of Netflix's most beloved shows is about two women in their 80s still trying to figure life out. Yes, despite the entire streaming world changing all around it, Grace and Frankie has persevered with the seventh and final season now in the works. Former model and actor Brooklyn Decker stars as Mallory Hansen on the hit series and is joining us now. Brooklyn, so excited to have you here on Cheddar. I love the show so much, especially during the pandemic. I think it offers some like warm and fuzzy feelings for audiences. So when does the seventh season pick up for filming? We have to know. Thank you, Asia. That's so kind of you. Um, and you're not the first person who shared that with me. I think a lot of people are just excited to have something that's warm and fuzzy and just makes you feel good. So thanks for watching the show. Uh, we had shot four episodes um, before we were shut down last March because of COVID. And we are supposed to be going back in June. So we're going to resume filming this summer uh, as long as we can do it as safely as possible. A lot of our cast has been vaccinated, thank goodness. Um, I know Jane was very vocal about that. So as soon as it's safe, we're going back and um, I'm being told June. So hopefully we'll have some episodes to you soon. Yes, that is good news. Glad to hear that vaccinations and safety precautions will be underway, of course. So we have to know, what do you want explored, especially for Mallory in this final season? It's going to be so hard to put a bow on it. I think people want to hold on forever. I know it, it's just, you know, it was Netflix's first uh, half hour comedy. And I think there were a lot of question marks around that because they had Orange is the New Black and House of Cards. Um, and granted, Orange is the New Black was hilarious, but they were both sort of more dramatic. And, uh, and, and this was a risk for Netflix. And it's so funny to sort of see Netflix grow into this giant machine and we're still there, the little engine that could. Um, and as far as what to expect, you know, I can't say much. I know a lot, but I can't say much. Um, but we see a lot of power dynamics shift. Um, I think there might be an actual fist fight that I may or may not be involved in, uh, which I'm very excited about. <laughs> uh, but just a lot of that sort of feel good, funny, warm television that uh, people have grown accustomed to with the show. And also, you mentioned your co-star, Jane Fonda, who plays your mother on the show. She was recently honored with the Cecil B. DeMille Award during the Golden Globes. She's also protesting right now the re-implementation of a pipeline in Minnesota. She's been so consistent with those two stories, so consistent with her excellence in acting and also in activism. What have you learned from Jane over the course of working with her? That there is enough time. If Jane can find the time to do all of these things, and as to your point, she you know got vaccinated and then now is quite literally putting her body on the line uh, to stop this oil pipeline from uh, from from being uh, extended on, um, then I have enough time. So I, I think ultimately what I've learned from watching her is that she's constantly thinking about who's in need and what she can be doing and how she can be offering um, herself and and her support to causes and. I think, you know, in our industry, it's so easy to get caught up in self and it's so easy to get caught up in, you know, what's of the moment, but to bring it back to what can I be doing as an individual for other people um, is something that is to the core Jane Fonda. So uh, yes, the bar has been raised just as a person to be better because I've been around her. I love that. And switching gears, because we are talking about vaccine distribution, we're of course in the middle of a pandemic. You're partnering with Zyrtec for a campaign called Go All Out in the Backyard. Of course, everyone trying to take advantage of any outdoor activities for safety reasons, but also hopefully weather warming up across the country. Tell us more about this campaign and why you wanted to be involved. Yes. Yeah, so I don't know about you. I, I think you're in New York. I could be wrong. I know a lot of the cheddar team is, but for, for me here in North Carolina, our yard has been truly a saving grace in the last year. I think some of the silver linings, the few silver linings of this year have taken place in our yard with our kids. That being said, I suffer from allergies. Um, so it can be quite complicated. And I'm excited to partner with Zyrtec. One, I've been a user for a long time. They always provide, Zyrtec always provides uh, instant 24 hour powerful relief. So I can actually do the things I love outside. Uh, but moreover, this Friday, March 19th is the first ever national backyard day. And I think after a year of our yards giving us so much entertainment and joy, 
when we've been locked at home, I think it's time we celebrate our yards. So I'm really excited just to promote people getting outside, uh, enjoying life safely and, and grounding themselves in the outdoors. It's good for everyone. Absolutely. And one part of that is learning to manage your seasonal allergies. So how have you been doing that? A lot of Zyrtec. Actually, my kids are my kids are on <laughs> right now as prescribed, even though it's over the counter by their pediatrician. Um, so yeah, I mean it's it's you know I I have been in Austin for the last decade, and there it's cedar fever and all the wildflowers, and now in North Carolina it's mold and the moisture and changing of seasons. So. I don't know about there, I was just watching a weather report, but um, you know, last week we had 70 degree weather and now it's rainy and 50 outside. So uh, the constant changes can affect all of us. So if we can get outside and enjoy it and feel good doing it, then it's worth it. Um, but for us, a lot of Zyrtec and then a lot of just getting dirty in the mud outside. Really fun and exciting. And really quickly before we let you go, Brooklyn, I want to ask, this pandemic has been transformative for so many people. Is there a silver lining or a lesson that you've taken away from this time? Ooh, yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know one person who hasn't uh, suffered this year. Uh, that being said, I think our family is incredibly grateful that um, our challenges have been fewer and, and less severe than most. Um, I think the silver lining for us this year has been the forced slowdown. I think we were all moving at an, a pace that was unsustainable. And I think this has been a great way to reset and get back to basics in life and enjoy the simple things with family. Um, I also think on a macro level, the racial reckoning that's taken place in this country is long overdue. Um, and if it took all of us being locked at home, focused on something to, uh, bring these stories really at the forefront of news and media and culture, um, then I think that that's, that's one positive to bring out of this is that I think we have a lot of people in this country who are now ignited um, and excited to be activists um, and, and changers for the better. Brooklyn Decker, so good to have you on the show. Thank you again for stopping by.